Hello once again dear viewers, you're watching Airy TV. Welcome to this special edition of Open Mic uh, with my guest for this evening, uh, Natnael Kasai. He is learning to be an astrophysicist in uh, the University of North Carolina, USA. Welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here today. Okay, I know my viewers, uh, they're actually asking what this gadget here is. So we will be talking about that. It's a telescope uh, which he made himself. Okay, so, um, but before that, I want you to tell our viewers uh, who Natnail is. Thank you. Uh, so I guess I would start off by saying that I am an Eritrean as I'm here today in Eritrea. Um, it's been very motivating in my studies to come back and be with my people and also give them a taste of what I have seen in my studies. Uh, so I would say that for me, that study had always began as a passionate interest in science, wanting to know how things worked, wanting to know why things behaved the way they did. And so even at an early age, I was you know, playing with electricity, magnets, just seeing why these forces were. And that eventually drove me to the study of physics, which despite the brunt of all the mathematics, it's still a wonderful description of our uh, physical universe around us. And I had a special interest too, even when I was younger, when my parents gave me uh, my first telescope at a young age uh, to look out into the sky and wonder, you know, what are these vast distances for these objects that I'm seeing in the sky? I know they're just not points of light. They have to be something. So in that pursuit, I've uh, picked the field of astrophysics to continue studying. And uh, with that, having been to Eritrea previously a few times, but it being a long time, I knew I wanted to come back and not be empty handed. I wanted to give a taste for all the wonders I've been able to study in my uh, academic career. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing you're coming back uh, to Eritrea because um, nowhere the, do the stars get brighter here. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so tell me about your personal experience uh, here uh, during your, this, this current uh, visit that, that you made. Uh, I was told uh, by the PFDJ that you've been engaged in conducting various seminars to the National Union of Eritrean Newton Students, the PFDJ itself, and, and, and what have you, the, the women organization. So first, let's start with your experiences, how you are getting attached with your country first, yeah? Absolutely. Uh, so I've had the privilege uh, in these seminars to be able to speak with uh, Eritrean youth and other interested individuals that, you know, when they saw at least the flyers saying astrophysics, I was happily able to uh, tell people what, uh, outside of articles and headlines, kind of an in-depth uh, view of what are these astrophysical objects that people talk about in news articles, and even with the equipment I brought with me, how it's possible to observe them. And so that was a seminar that I conducted with the National uh, Youth Students Organization. And then from there, I was also able to have the opportunity to tour the uh, university, at least in my nephew. And with that, I was able to meet with those students in their laboratories and see that, you know, on the other side of the world, how they're doing the same studies that I'm also doing. But with me, I also hope to expand on those uh, resources and opportunities. Outside of um, the seminars, however, I've also been able to tour the various parts of the country. Uh, it's been good to see at least that Eritrea's development is being sustained uh, through their current policies. And uh, with that, at least having seen and met with the youth, it's very inspiring to know that they'll take you know, great opportunity at the equipment I brought with me. And they're very engaged and they're very serious about their studies. And, for me, this telescope was a bit of a relief for whenever the math and the physics was too much. So I hope that in the same way, I'm able to inspire them to maintain that balance between the books and also the passion. Mm -hmm. um, but with those seminars and the other uh, experiences I've had, it's been very informative for me and a way for me to really connect with the people here. Mm -hmm. So um, you've interacted with the students that are taking the same uh fields of uh, discipline that you that you've picked up so h how are they doing I mean will they be able to make it do they have the right equipments here in this country and I want you to tell me about that so that our viewers can also be inspired to learn astronomy yeah absolutely uh, or astro astro physics physics yeah there, there is uh, currently not the astronomy study, but in the future, at least because there's so many people that are interested or passionate about it, even if they're not in this field of physics, I hope that as these uh, youngsters get more educated on the subject that they can also proliferate that knowledge. 
at least for the study of physics that is being conducted at my nephi, I was able to see the laboratories that students were working in. And it was many of them were the same experiences, uh, experiments that I had done in uh, my previous years in undergrad. And that was at least showing to me that, you know, we're doing the same labs, we're doing the same equations, but at least in terms of uh, resources, it's in progress, but at least I know that in my capacity, what I can do, because as I found, the students are just equally passionate about the subject. Mm -hmm. So what are you planning to do for these students? Uh, so first of which is that this telescope will remain in Eritrea for the students to use in their observations and their studies of the stars. Uh, many of them were telling me about how, you know, they look up at night and try to see what constellations they see and also they read about the news articles of discoveries, but it was very, uh, it was very inspiring to see them get excited that they could look through an eyepiece now and just get even closer to it. And just beyond that, there's also the other cameras and equipment that comes with this that allows you to actually take photos of these subjects and that almost makes you feel like you're almost on par with NASA sometimes. So amateur astronomy and taking photos of uh, distant objects is very, very uh, inspiring, especially whenever the math and the physics bogs you down a lot. It's actually really good news because now the uh, Eritrean uh, uh, Institute of Technology, the MineFA School, uh, will be equipped with a telescope now, yeah, and one that is made by an Eritrean, yeah, and, it's, and this I know will also inspire others to build a telescope of their own. Uh, now I want to go back to uh, the seminars. Okay, so did you leave uh, a sort of uh, an inspiration amongst the youth that you've interacted with at the seminar? Absolutely, I think it was mutually beneficial. Um, for me, I was very inspired because I knew at least before I came here that, you know, I want to at least apply my field of study to other people's lives and at least give them a chance, just as I've had, to be inspired by the cosmos. And with that, at least having seen that, um, how excited they get about the subject matter is also, that's something that we both have common ground with on top of being Eritreans. So just because the community of, you know, Eritreans even studying astrophysics so far to me numbers one, but hopefully in the future, I can see them amongst the ranks and also have those uh, tight, you know, common bonds between us. There's already the fact that we're Eritreans and that we're interested in astronomy and physics, but I just hope to give them every opportunity just as I've had and part of that is bringing the telescope here today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you've also told me uh, that you've traveled across Eritrea um, and you've seen the development uh, you know, that is happening in all the uh, regions. Which, which regions were they in particular? Uh, mostly around the Makal region. We had at least gone past, uh, I think, seeing the dams that were constructed in Adihalo and around Gajarat. And at least seeing that, you know, there's at least that national infrastructure investment into, you know, those critical uh, resources such as water supply is something that at least to me is a good indicator that, you know, national development is utmost priority. And at least that, you know, without keeping the taps on and, you know, all the necessary requirements for the people to sustain their lives, that that investment's being made so that way in the future we can build upon that. So it's inspiring to see that that's being taken care of. So that way in the future, we can continue to build on those successes. Okay, so not now, now, which brings me back to the telescope. I want you to tell me how this gadget here works, yeah? Absolutely. <laughs> because I, I also have a, a certain interest to look at the stars and I was always hoping to see it closer. Absolutely. Uh, this is a 650 millimeter focal length and 130 millimeter uh, diameter uh, Newtonian reflector telescope. Uh, this is a principle operating by the opening here. We'll have a secondary mirror that will direct the light from here, but not before the light travels the length of the telescope, bounces off the mirror here, comes back to that secondary mirror here and into the eyepiece for the observer to see. So with those optics and the mirrors that are being used, that was actually uh, pioneered by Isaac Newton, hence the name the Newtonian Reflector Telescope. Uh, this provides a way to see the cosmos even closer. There's also this motorized and computerized mount here that is also able to, with a remote, direct you to the objects that you wish to observe. So a lot of faint objects that aren't observable um, just with the naked eye, such as some very faint galaxies, mm -hmm. the remote will guide you there. And then from there, whenever you take your photos, 
in a long exposure, you'll slowly see the light from the galaxy collect. And just seeing it on the LCD screen is something I never get tired of because this is the consumer equipment, such as a camera, and also you can buy parts for the telescope, but you're over here making scientific discoveries of your own by just assembling them together, running the software, and just opening that shutter for just more than a fraction of a second. Opening it up for 30 seconds just reveals the spiral arms of other galaxies, and I, that's something that I remember the moment that I first pointed my camera up at the sky and did that, and that's what confirmed to me this is the field I want to study. Interesting. So what makes this particularly significant uh, when it comes to assembling it and making it yourself and which parts are uh, necessary for you to purchase to, to, to make it? Yeah. Apart from the ones that you buy ready-made. Absolutely. Uh, so some of these had been manufactured and assembled by myself whenever the parts for it had come. In fact, uh, one interesting part that is homemade here is the counterweight, rather than having carried this in uh, the international flight luggage, this was something that was made at Medibet. So, at Medibet? Yeah, Medibet had a hand right here on the counterweight. And that was interesting and inspiring to see that people were just taking the initiative to have just a piece of themselves in Eritrea into this telescope. So this telescope is now naturalized here. Um, and also the parts of it that were important to assemble were such as the viewfinder, which gives you a better view about where you're pointed. Uh, this also mount here it was something that I had to order to make sure that it fit for the right mount. So assembling the pieces and making sure you have the right cameras, adapters, equipment, is a bit of a hassle in itself and something that I made sure to sort out before I came here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in that respect also, so that way it can continue to be maintained by the people that use it here and that it can continue to have a lasting legacy. So the lenses inside, they will have to be purchased, definitely. Yes. Uh, this one here is one of the eyepieces that had come with the telescope, but with it I also have another set that will just allow different views for people to observe different types of objects compared to planets, compared to galaxies, compared to nebulas. Uh, all the equipment is here with me today. Mm -hmm. And it's much more cost effective than having to purchase one from the store, yes? Absolutely. Often whenever ones are advertised in the store, they're targeted at least towards a younger audience or they're maybe not to a grade that they can do maybe some semi-professional astronomical observations. But with this equipment here and at least the specifications that I had for it, I made sure that it was able to do the types of simple experiments that go beyond just astronomy and allow you to apply some physics principles and do some uh, data analysis. And that's also the part of it that can make it a scientific tool as well that I'm really excited about. Okay. So, not Nile, this is actually very fascinating because you will be leaving something of you behind here. Okay. But what will you be taking home with you as you go back to school again to the United States? Absolutely. Uh, I'll be taking the fact that, you know, I'm so happy to have met with my peers that are on the other side and knowing that they're also passionate about their studies and that's something for me that knows I want to continue to have this cooperation with them, continue to at least provide the types of equipment to do even more experiments in the future with this types of studies. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, for me, it's very inspiring because I know in my career, in my trajectory, what I feel like my greater purpose is in that sense. I knew at least the last time I came to Eritrea, I was about 12 years old. That was very, uh, it gave me a moment for having that identity and that connection with the people here. And it was also good to see family. It had been a long time. But since then, I have now known specifically who I feel like my audience is, my peers, and the people that I hope to continue to work with in the future. So that's something that will continue to guide my uh, career choices in that respect. Interesting. I will leave the floor now to you to tell your messages to these peers that you're talking about. Absolutely. I would say that, you know, the study of astronomy and at least astrophysics may seem like some high dollar field for other countries or other uh, enterprises, but the fact that now consumer equipment can be combined with some of the parts that I brought here today with me, I hope that Eritreans know that now they can have a chance to also look at the stars at a greater look and that their eye is no longer the limit, the sky is now the limit with this equipment. And with that, I'd also encourage that those, because of the partners that I've had here that have been able to make it a success, the digital library that's being conducted by the Aurora Digital Library, 
uh, has been very inspiring to see also because this is an educational resource that's going to be massively effective for a lot of people. Rather than uh, using the hard copies which are prone to damage or at least to distribution limits, there is actually now with that digital library a soft copy distribution network that's being educationally targeted towards youth. And so on that platform, I actually hope to provide even greater astronomy resources through that. And I would encourage those in the diaspora to look into how within their respective fields and the studies that they do, how they can apply those and have a massive impact here. Because for me, physics can be something that I see people in the ivory tower, they crunch their numbers, they publish, they go home. But for me, I know that this is a very interesting field and this would inspire a lot of people. So I would encourage at least those to seek how they can do the same in their respective fields. Not now, it was indeed a pleasure that uh, you have shared our floor today. And I hope uh, you have inspired many through uh, Airy TV this evening. Dear viewers, that wraps up this week's open mic. It is good night from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.